Yeah, my name is Patrick Foster, and um, I run the construction technology program at City College. I'm faculty and chair of that department, and I've been at City College for 12 years. Well, the main campus is pretty much the same as it is, except for the new uh, building they just put in, but it's pretty much the same. I'm housed at the Wake Center, which is a satellite campus, and that campus has changed quite a bit. When I first came at the Wake Center, on at the Wake Center, you know, I started the program, so they put me in a wood shop, but I couldn't leave anything overnight. I had to move it so the wood shop could operate, so that, that wasn't working. So I went outside in the parking lot and constructed this 20 by 20 frame with a tarp over it so I could work there, and a lot of our cuts at night, so I would have spotlights from Home Depot on, and, and that was terrible. And then Wake Center finally inherited a bunch of temporary classrooms from a school that was ending in Carpinteria. So they shipped them up and I got a couple of those classrooms and a, we put a patio in between. So we have a legitimate workspace now. So that campus has changed and we've built a lot of structures for that campus. So th those have been an addition there. We've done, we've done a lot of work, which most people don't know about. I mean, we, we tell people, but it doesn't get around. But on main campus here, we've done a huge shed for the uh, horticulture department, which has a classroom and an office and tool storage. We did a facility shed not too far from that down at the overlook over there. Um, we're doing a pergola for the math program in the IDC building this now. We did a pergola for the preschool across the street there. Um, and we did a lot of structures at Wake Center. We've done tons of sheds and pergolas and things. So yeah, we do a lot. <laughs> Easily the teachings. And I imagine everybody answers that because that's why we come here. So when you're department chair, you have a lot of administrative duties, which can be onerous, and especially if you do it for a long time. But the teaching is always the best thing, and I, I really love my class. You know, it's, uh, it's construction technology, so I get students from just out of high school to mature 50 and even 60-year-olds. I even had an 80-year-old come and take some of my classes. And there are all different kinds of, there are people from the community just interested in building, or, or a lot of tradespeople take them. So, and they're real down-to-earth people, you know, no BS. And, so they're really great to teach and we can talk about anything and they're really great to talk about philosophical issues and world issues because they don't have a lot of baggage in that area so they're really fresh conversations so that's been really good. After teaching I think um, uh, creating this, the program itself so I started with one classroom I was hired and the program hadn't we've had iterations of the program before but it had gone defunct so so they, had, they asked me to start up the program. So we started with one classroom, and I've created like 20 or so classes over those years until we got enough to have an actual program. We were just classes for a while, and then we created the program. So that was pretty exciting, pretty creative work, trying to figure out you know, what kind of classes to have. And then the special projects I've also really liked to do in the community. Right now I'm doing a pre-apprenticeship program with, with the, the higher students and it's I went to uh, Germany a few summers ago with a consortium of community college teachers that teach energy efficiency and and uh, and we went and looked at their vocational ed and a lot of their uh, solar and wind design and I tried to incorporate I started an apprenticeship program here as a pilot study and a lot of those students are really great and they'll uh, I, I look forward to them doing great things in the future it's a little more intimate program than the general one I have. Yeah, I have a summer school, a high school class with Hispanic students, and we always do a, a project. So we did uh, furniture for the um, Mexican consulate in Oxnard one summer, you know, a stage and, uh, you know, a big uh, uh, audiovisual shelf. And then we did um, an aviary for the Audubon Society here where they they had some birds, specifically Max, the, the great horned owl who, who nurtured young owls, and a, a hawk that was injured, a red-tailed hawk. And they couldn't go back in the public, and they weren't getting along with the other birds, so we built a whole aviary in this lot. That was really interesting, you know, the kids really liked that. So, yeah, we do a lot of, we do a lot of interesting projects. Uh, we did a, one I really liked was a pergola at the Wake Center. It's a Japanese design. It's really an interesting structure and that was a lot of fun. Um, well, this pre-apprenticeship program I was telling you about, that's a way to get a little closer to the students and probably the success of that, it's only been going a year and a half, is that 
they consider themselves special, which is kind of interesting. I didn't think that would enter into it. But they hang out more with me, <laughs> and which is great. So I've talked to them a lot more in this program, which, and, and I can get a lot more across to them. <clears throat> One of the things I really emphasize in my program is trying to be realistic and, and showing them what the construction career is really like and how it's changing, because it is changing. And I also talk about the future and try to get them to see trends coming up because things are really changing in the world fast. We're going to be a much more immigrating society with global warming. We're going to have to develop new kinds of structures. What we're doing now is not sustainable. So the whole field is going to change. So I'm, I try to get them prepared for that. It's hard because you don't know what the future is going to be, but you know it's going to change. So I think that's, really, that's a really important thing I've tried to do. And one of the things I really emphasize is <clears throat> world issues and how building you know, we, we have kind of an ecological approach to building because it's, <clears throat> sustainability is a big factor in it. And ecology just shows the connections of everything. Well, building itself is connected to everything in life. And uh, I tell them that, you know, we can't just think about the house. We have to think about the lot it's on. We have to think about the community it's in, the city it's in. There's no really division between those things. They run together. And you can't teach it in isolation anymore. You have to teach the whole thing. So there's a lot of ethical issues involved, and it goes into global warming and world issues. You know, houses use more energy than any other uh, object in the country, and they create more trash. So those are all world issues, so you know, they have to know about that. So I'm, I'm really proud that I've made that an emphasis in all my classes over the years. Well, you know, I tell them, you know, the, the interesting thing is uh, some of these uh, departments in the school have uh, kind of, um, students that will not take a lot of college after that, like a lot of the CTE, they're going to go on and do jobs, they're being prepared for jobs. Some of my students go on and get their AS degree, but a lot of them don't. So this is maybe the only college they have. So it's, I have a chance to, to impact these students. This may be the only chance. So they're going to vote locally and wherever they go about sustainable issues and about building issues and development issues. So I want them to know about that stuff. They may not get it anywhere else, so I feel it's real important that they understand that so they can be better citizens and better world citizens because you know we have to make a lot of important decisions coming up. Well, the creating the CT program, I mean, I, that's an achievement, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that, that was easy to do because I've been a builder and a teacher all my life, so I just fell into that pretty easily. But I think um, the, uh, the way I teach, the broad way I teach about issues and ethical issues and sustainability, I, th I think to me I'm, I'm, I, I like having done that more. Uh, it took a lot of work. I've, um, as a result of learning and teaching sustainability, which is a huge issue, I've actually got into it and I've written a lot of books on the side in the last few years about that area, so I'm really so it's really actually stimulated me as a person, too, to learn about that stuff. I think, I mean, and I, I, I was on committees. I was on the Teaching and Learning Committee. I, I chaired that for a while. All the chairs have to be on committees. And so I was on that committee. And one of the things I did on that committee had nothing to do with building. But it was an educational thing. And it was about broadening education and bringing sustainability and ethical issues not only into the classes where it seems appropriate, like philosophy classes and, and, and justice classes, but every class. And community college teachers tend to be very narrowly focused on their discipline. And that's always been a gripe of mine, is they would say, well, we don't have time to do anything else. I said, no, you, 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 you don't have time not to do a lot of these other things, because these people are going into the world, and they need to be prepared. And if they only take your science class, and you don't teach them some of these ethical issues and sustainability things, we've lost that opportunity and they're gone. And, uh, you know, I've kind of fought that battle a lot here. And uh, so that's, and I don't know that I would ever be remembered for that, but if, 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 I, if I could choose what I would be remembered for, it'd be more like that. Probably the same in every community college. It's a, it's a really defined segment of people. And they, they're kind of interesting. I've, I've taught in, at the university and I've taught high school and community college is right in between. They're kind of like, they kind of have the dedication of high school teachers where they just put out for their students all the time. They create clubs, they, they spend a lot of their, their extra non-paid time with students, helping students. 
and then they have the, the intellectuality of, of a university. They're not just on a high school level, it's just teaching out of a text. Um, so that's a nice combination, and I think they're pretty down to earth. I taught at UCSB, and I actually prefer the <laughs> people here, the faculty here. <laughs> you may want to edit that out, I don't know. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I think it's because community colleges are teaching colleges. You know, they have this distinction with universities that they can be research or teaching. And the research ones, obviously they have a lot of good teachers, but that's not their dedication. And community college is to get to the students and no matter what to get to the students. Like, they don't give up. And there are so many programs. Every year we get new programs, slightly different approaches to try to zero in and get that few bunch that we missed on the last program. And I think that's really great. You know, it's really committed to picking up every student, making sure they get through. And even, even still, kids fall through the cracks, but I think community college makes the best effort at that.